We're at the 2016 Makeup Artist Design Show in Dusseldorf, Germany. And I'm Dana Nye, president of Ben Nye Makeup. I'd like you to meet Stan Edmonds, who's our featured makeup artist today. Stan is the makeup director at the Vancouver Film School. Contact him if you're thinking about studying at this outstanding school. Stan has about 50 feature film credits, including iRobot, The Butterfly Effect, Unforgiven, and Scary Movie, which is perfect for today's subject. So far, we've got a bald cap, plastic cap, that we've prepped Carlos with so that we could overlay a foam latex prosthetic mask. We've also got some foam latex ears here, done a little bit of blending and are getting really close to start painting. As Stan begins, the color scheme will be layered with Ben Nye's new Pro Color Aqua Formula. So you're going to learn a lot today. It's our pleasure to present Stan and Carlos. So to begin with, I'm going to uh, seal the foam piece with a little bit of ProSade. This will give me a nice surface to work on with the paints, which in this case are going to be the water-based Pro Color series. We decided to glue down the mouth last, enabling our model a little bit of freedom and have a chance to uh, eat before we finally seal everything up. So we're just going to glue down the mouth before painting. One of the things about this piece is it was not made for Carlos. It's a stock piece made for somebody else that we're refitting to his face, which means a certain amount of adjustment on eyes and mouth and placement. And uh, to, we'll still be able to get a, a good final effect, but it's a little more fiddling to do with the fit. These colors are going to dry a little bit darker than what you'll see them in liquid form. So the idea of doing a little bit of a test is a good idea. We also are going to use a brush, a large powder type brush to stipple on the initial color. And that's going to give us a nice fast way to cover a large area quickly. It's also going to give us a little bit of texture when we layer that stippling of the brush in. And as you can see, he's going to be a red devil. When you're doing a prosthetic makeup like this, oftentimes the application is going to be half your time. Uh, just to make sure the piece lays down properly, you're navigating fit problems and adjustments. And then the other half of the time you want as much time as possible, obviously, for, for the paint work. Because I laid down the foam piece and I put a little bit of ProSade over that and the bald cap, that gave me a surface that should have the paint go evenly everywhere. Sealing things with ProSade like that's going to really just help give you a nice uh, uniform look to your paint when it goes on that surface. You can continue to stipple and overlay color to get a smooth effect or a textured effect and you can even layer colors with these brushes which is what I'm going to do. Also I have less trepidation working around the eyes when it's a water-based color. This first color was fire red, mixed with a little death flesh so it's not quite as intense. Again, they dry a little bit darker, so it's good to do a little bit of a test. I'm going to mix up a second red color using blood red to do a little stippling texture over top of the fire red foundation. Because the piece has such strong sculpted texture, the bald cap doesn't, nor does his skin, this is why I'm choosing a heavily textured uh, paint scheme. So I'm just mixing up on the same palette a bit of a shading color. It's important uh, before you finish all your texture, kind of shade in all the recessed shadow areas to detail them, bring them out a little bit. This is a, a little more of the dried blood now to also make that a concentrated kind of shadow color. And it gives us some really weird depth, uh, almost as though these little wrinkles and folds are holes in his face, you know, but it's going to actually give us a, a little more of an organic looking shadow. I went in with the darkest color first, which was um, going with a midnight blue. And now I'm going over that with this nice dried blood. And you see you get a nice layered effect. 
Uh, I'm a big believer that highlights and shadows should never just be one color. Uh, so you can put your first shadow on and then soften it or deepen it with the second color. Some of these will need a real tiny brush too. The fun of the pro colors is that it's like watercolors where you can layer and, and, and mix and get some fabulous effects real time as you're doing the makeup. I'm saving the eyelids for last because we'll go very dark in the center. But before we go very dark in the center, we want to use the dried blood, all the areas that we want to see it. I'm going to do that around all the horns. I have this little dried blood detailing in the uh, shading, sculpted detail here. Almost like wounds, so the horns burst through. And you can see that because it is a water-based color, it also bleeds out really nice. You've got good control and it spreads a little bit as you're applying it. Very nice for this effect we're doing here. This dried blood color is ast astonishing because I know that the Ben Nye Company spent a lot of time formulating and reformulating to get this the way they wanted to. They had very high standards because of their blood colors and products that they have and uh, went over and above the call of normal duty to get a fantastic color for their dried blood. Works great on scabbing effects and uh, as you can see even here surrounding our horns. What's worked really well here now for a highlight is actually the Death Flesh color. Very dead looking color of course being in the Death Flesh series but it's actually giving us just a nice subtle highlight just to bring out a few of these little details here and there. Now by going over that texture that I did with the brush earlier, with just a bit of a really washy, mostly water color, I can soften the texture and let it blend together. So that's the great thing you can do with these watercolors. Go over a bit of water and it softens your texture if you, if you think you overdid it. And then we'll try airbrushing some texture on here as well. This just helps blend everything together. We're going to spatter on a bit of uh, texture now, a bit of highlight texture to tie everything together, give a skin coating on top. And I'm using uh, a little death flesh here, watered down a bit because I want it to be very washy when it spatters on as a very soft texture. So I'm actually mixing it in my airbrush. Just by covering the tip and then triggering back and forth, we can kind of bubble up and mix, it, mix colors right in the cup. Test in the back first. So we're layering over kind of a highlight texture of spatter, sort of washed down death flesh color, just to give another layer of texture. As many layers as you can work in and textures will give it a more organic look. And then I'm just tapping on those textures to soften them so that they look like textures and not paint speckles. You don't want your paint to look like paint. Close your eyes. Oddly enough. This technique also helps just tie everything together with all your different highlights and shadows and layers of color. Brings it into one skin. Between colors I can just flush through some water just to clean the airbrush with a little bit of water. Don't have to use uh, alcohol with these. Being water-based you just get a nice clean between colors. Spray that out into a closed tissue so that we keep the particulates contained. No paint in the air. So now I've got some indigo blue made up as a wash that I'm just going to do a little bit of shading with. So now I'm doing a little bit of shading. I've done some blood red, uh, rather dried blood around the eyes with some shading. And now to go even darker, closer to the eye, Instead of a straight black, I'm going to use Ben Nye's Vintage Black. So it's a little bit of a blue-green tattoo kind of black, but it'll work very nice for this effect. So 
So now we're placing in some pre-made horns. These pieces were sculpted with places for these horns that could be made separately and glued in. So going back to our standby highlight color of death flesh to actually highlight the horns a bit. Just touching up some of the detail of the highlight and shadow around these horns. A few more uh, final touches and then we're uh, going to add some sheen with final seal. So now Carlos has put in some contact lenses that are appropriately uh, demonic for this makeup and also some teeth. Now that he's got the lenses in, we'll just do a little touch up around the eyes and then get to a few finishing things. Close your eyes now. That's the easy one to do. A little more of our vintage black. So now we're going to finish off with a little bit of final seal to create a bit of a sheen. The Pro Color series are made to dry matte, which is a really handy finish, and it's very easy to then alter that to add some halation, some shine with final seal. Well, here we are after a very long session with my very patient model, Carlos. But you can see the result is really big and stunning. And what's interesting about it for me was we have a foam latex prosthetic, a plastic bald cap that we were able to paint entirely with the Pro Color series. Everything on this, the basing, the detailing, the eye makeups, even the airbrushing textures all done with Pro Color. I hope you join us next time and look at our other videos on the Ben Nye YouTube channel. We're off to take some photographs now.